If you care about your privacy, you probably don't have an Amazon Ring doorbell or any Ring cameras in your home. But if you do, I encourage you to throw them away and replace them with one of the more private alternatives I tested in this video. This is not a sponsored video, and I paid full price for every camera I tested. This video breaks down into five segments that start at the time mark shown. In the final segment, I will give you my recommendation based on their key features, privacy policy, real-world test results, and history of lawsuits and FTC fines for violating people's privacy. These recommendations surprised me because the brand of cameras I have personally been using for the past 8 to 10 years scored much worse than I expected, and I am going to be replacing all of my home security cameras. I am Dr. John Padfield, an engineer, former state representative, and business professor, and this is Business Reform, where business, technology, and society intersect. If you want to support my work bringing you unbiased, sponsor-free product reviews like this, I invite you to buy me a coffee using this QR code or the link in the description. Why you may want to replace your home security cameras. While there are no publicly available market reports for home security cameras, an analysis of published industry data suggests Amazon Ring is by far the biggest player with approximately one-third of the U.S. market. I once had a Ring doorbell camera many years ago before they were acquired by Amazon in 2018. Here is why I personally do not trust any Amazon Ring camera today. In September 2019, Amazon Ring told Consumer Reports that it, quote, will not disclose user video to law enforcement unless the user expressly consents or if a disclosure is required by law, such as to comply with a warrant, end quote. But every policy has its exceptions. As of mid-July 2022, Amazon had shared footage from Ring security cameras and video doorbells with police, quote, without a court order or owner permission 11 times this year. Amazon claims all those instances were emergencies, but as we all know, the definition of an emergency is broad, fluid, and subject to interpretation. That was 2022. In January 2024, Amazon announced, quote, Ring will stop allowing police departments to request doorbell camera footage from users, and NPR noted, quote, The company did not provide a reason for the change, which will be effective starting this week. What I find interesting is when Amazon decided in 2024 to quit sharing Ring camera footage with police departments, they publicly announced it. But when they changed their minds again the following year, quote, Amazon's Ring has quietly undone their earlier privacy policy that bars police access to private video. As always, links to all of my sources can be found in the description. Please keep in mind, Ring makes more than just doorbell cameras. They also make indoor cameras that some people put in their home offices, living rooms, and even bedrooms. A July 2025 article in TechSpot states, quote, A person familiar with the plans told Business Insider that Ring is also exploring future features that may allow police to live stream from Ring devices with user consent. Let's put this all together. Despite having a policy against it, Amazon shared Ring video footage with law enforcement without a warrant or user consent. Amazon then publicly announced they will no longer allow police to request user doorbell camera footage. The following year, Amazon quietly undid that privacy policy when they partnered with Axon to give law enforcement warrantless access to video footage for what it calls, quote, evidence management. And Ring is allegedly exploring future features that may allow police to live stream from Ring devices. Please note that statement does not limit those live streams to just your doorbell. I know that last statement says, with user consent, but we have already established that Amazon has violated their own policies in the past and quietly reversed pro-privacy policies. That is enough to make me not trust them. But wait, there's more. In October 2025, Amazon Ring announced, quote, Flock Safety is teaming up with Amazon Ring Security to offer the public and law enforcement a new way to share video footage that can assist in crime investigations. If you have a Ring camera on your front door or in your living room or bedroom and you are comfortable with this, that's your business. 
but I am not okay with it, and I will never have a ring camera installed on my property, let alone inside of my home. Comparison of Features and Privacy Policies So what are the most private doorbell and home security camera options in 2026? To do a serious comparison, we must start by defining our criteria. What really matters when choosing home security cameras for inside or outside of your home? This is where it gets tricky because everyone may have their own priorities for determining what camera is best for them. Here are the criteria I care about most. I use these criteria to determine which cameras to purchase and test. First and foremost is where is the recorded video stored and who has access to it. You may have seen the coffee mug that reads, there is no cloud, it's just someone else's computer. That coffee mug is 100% right. Some cameras simply won't work without the cloud, and others will partially work, meaning they will record locally, but you may lose a lot of functionality if you don't upload to the cloud. In addition to privacy concerns, many cloud storage cameras require monthly subscriptions to use them. Therefore, I am going to eliminate from further consideration any camera that requires the use of cloud storage or allow the company to access your recordings. I then chose what appears to be the 10 most popular home security camera brands, plus three more that I have seen discussed in various privacy blogs that I read. These 13 brands represent somewhere around 90% of the U.S. home security camera market. After looking up their features and privacy policy, I immediately ruled out six of them because of their reliance on the cloud. I want to pause for a second and acknowledge one camera brand I intentionally excluded from this video. The Unify Protect camera is very highly praised in online privacy blogs. The reason I did not include it in this video is because it is a wired system rather than a wireless system. Wired systems have a lot of advantages over wireless, but ease of installation is not one of them. If you want to see a review of this and possibly other wired camera brands, please let me know in the comment section, and if there's enough interest, I will make a video about them. To simplify my comparison, I am going to use a red-yellow-green scoring system for my criteria, and in my opinion, only six brands pass the default storage and company access policy test. Red means it uses cloud storage and the company has access to your video. Green means local storage and the company claims that it does not access your video. For these six brands, I then considered what permissions I needed to give their associated apps and what data the camera manufacturer said they shared with third parties. Five of these camera manufacturers ask for very similar app permissions, such as access to your phone's camera so you can scan a QR code to add cameras to the app permission to send notifications, and access to your phone's microphone so you can talk to someone you see on your security camera. These cameras generally do not admit to collecting or sharing any of your video with anyone, but as you will see in a moment, the key word is admit. I want to point out for maximum privacy, the Defender Phoenix M2 is already a standout. It is a completely offline system, meaning that it does not use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or any app. Additionally, the signals between the camera and the base unit use 128-bit encryption to prevent neighbors from potentially accidentally accessing your audio or video streams, like was recently reported with a premium brand baby monitor. However, the Defender Phoenix M2 represents the classic trade-off between privacy and convenience. Because it doesn't connect to the internet at all, it is extremely private. But that also means that you can't see your video cameras when you are away from home. Everyone needs to decide for themselves what is the right balance between privacy and convenience for them. There is no one right answer for everyone. Real-world testing. I ordered at least one camera from all six camera brands that use local storage by default. Because every brand offers a wide variety of indoor, outdoor, and solar-powered cameras, it wasn't practical to purchase and test one of everything. My testing was not intended to be an exhaustive test of range and image quality under every possible lighting condition. I just wanted to ensure the cameras performed as advertised and to see how friendly the app was that controlled the cameras. First up is Eufy, a brand I know well because I have nearly a dozen of them around the perimeter of my house. 
The cameras perform as advertised, and I have never had an issue with them losing connection to the base unit where my data is stored. The blue bars were added by me to respect the privacy of my neighbors. I've only had one Eufy camera fail on me in the past six years, and that was my fault. I put an indoor camera in my unheated garage, and after a few years, the thermal cycling caused it to fail. From a performance standpoint, Eufy is a pass. Next up are two Rio Link cameras I purchased, an outdoor pan and tilt camera, and a video doorbell. I was pleased with both the night vision and daylight performance of the pan and tilt camera. Likewise, I was happy with the image quality both after dark and during the day with the Rio Link video doorbell. However, the Rio Link doorbell suffers from the common problem getting proper exposure on someone's face when there is a bright background behind them. I then tried to connect my night owl outdoor camera, but something went wrong. Again and again and again. On my eighth try, I got past this screen on the app and I saw this screen telling me my phone was connected to my camera and the camera was searching for my Wi-Fi network and it may take a few minutes. 17 minutes later, my camera was still searching for my Wi-Fi network. I'm pretty sure Mr. Magoo could have found my Wi-Fi network quicker. After spending an entire hour trying to get the camera to connect to my home network, I did some checking and found that Night Owl has a ton of negative reviews on Reddit because of poor quality in general and connection issues in particular. Night Owl also has a 1.6 rating out of 36 reviews on Trustpilot and an F rating with the Better Business Bureau. In other words, I didn't just happen to get a rare bad device. A lot of people have experienced the same issues I had with Night Owl. Next up was the dual lens indoor Lorex camera I purchased. I only hooked it up for testing purposes as I do not have any internet connected cameras in living spaces in my home, but I was especially impressed with the night vision capabilities of this camera. Next is the TP Tapo video doorbell that gave me incredible image quality of my driveway at night. It produced a good image quality during the day, but like many other doorbells, it struggles to properly expose a person's face when the sky is bright behind the person. Finally, we have the Defender Phoenix M2 camera. The image quality is better than it appears on the screen right now. This unit is completely offline, and I use my phone to take a photo of the 7-inch standalone monitor that displays the video feed from the cameras and records video to an SD card. Lawsuits, Federal Trade Commission fines, and security vulnerabilities. Remember when I said I don't trust Amazon Ring? Here is another reason why. According to the Federal Trade Commission, Ring employees illegally surveilled customers and failed to stop hackers from taking control of users' cameras. Which employees? According to ABC News, Ring gave every employee full access to all customer video for years. Again, if you care about your privacy, I encourage you to throw away every Ring camera you own and replace it with a more private alternative. When I threw away my Ring doorbell about eight or nine years ago, I replaced it with a Eufy video doorbell. I read the privacy policy and was happy with it, and I knew it used local storage, so I thought it was private. I was wrong. The New York Attorney General fined Eufy nearly half a million dollars for security concerns, but that is the least of my concerns related to Eufy. Eufy has been hit with multiple lawsuits over secretly uploading user images and live video to the cloud and assigning a unique identifier to the faces of anyone walking by the camera, and those unique identifiers follow that person even when they walk by Eufy cameras on other accounts. Eufy is also being sued for violating the Illinois Biometric Information Privacy Act. These types of incidents are exactly why I have never put an internet-enabled camera in a living space in my home. I have numerous Eufy cameras outside of my home, but I have never trusted any camera in a living space like a living room or a bedroom. And you better believe I will be replacing all of the Eufy cameras around my house based on the information I just shared with you. Security camera company Wise had a data breach that resulted in about 13,000 of their users being able to view video from other users' cameras. 
ADT was sued in a class action suit after one of their employees spied on customers in, quote, intimate moments. That ADT technician then pleaded guilty to spying on over 200 women over the course of four and a half years. It seems the power to abuse access to camera networks is too great of a temptation for many people, including some members of law enforcement. These are just four recent examples of police officers, a police chief, and a sheriff's office employee being caught and arrested for stalking with Flock cameras. And Flock's partnership with Ring may soon allow police to live stream straight from cameras inside of people's homes. What could possibly go wrong? Home security camera company Lorex was sued by the Nebraska Attorney General over, quote, critical security vulnerabilities. In November 2025, Google was hit with a class action lawsuit claiming misrepresentations and mishandling of audio and voice interactions. Arlo was sued for allowing a third-party vendor to intercept, store, and monetize website support chats without properly notifying users. While this did not involve unauthorized access to video feeds, it still raises serious questions about the company's commitment to privacy. TP-Link has not been sued, but several high-risk vulnerabilities have been found over the past few years. The company has acknowledged these vulnerabilities when they were discovered, notified their customers, and prioritized fixing the issues. So where does all of this leave us? Final Recommendations Only two cameras scored green on all three of my categories. Both RioLink and Defender have local storage, worked well in my hands-on test, and have a clean history regarding privacy lawsuits, FTC fines for privacy violations, and no significant security vulnerabilities have been found. TP-Link Tapo also scores well. They have had some security vulnerabilities discovered, but they quickly address them. If you want the best privacy, I recommend the completely offline Defender security cameras. However, if you want really good privacy while keeping the ability to view your security cameras and get alerts while you are away from home, I recommend either RioLink or TP Tapo. We began this video by talking about Flock partnering with Amazon Ring to gain access to people's doorbell videos, but Flock isn't stopping there. Flock is also wanting to partner with a dash cam company to get trillions more images a month to feed into their AI-powered dynamic surveillance network. That is why I am currently testing to find the most private dash cams. Subscribe and turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss that video. If you want to help support my work, please use this QR code or the link in the description. I can't wait to read your comments.